Hey, what is going on guys? This is Jake at That Fit Friend and today I'm reviewing the Reebok Nano 12 Adventure. So with the Reebok Nano 11, I was not the biggest fan of that core training shoe. However, when the Nano 11 Adventure rolled out, I thought this was a really unique and interesting shoe. It's honestly my favorite iteration of the Nano 11 to date. And now with the Nano 12's updates, I like this model for more general training, so I was stoked to see what the Nano 12 Adventure would have in store. Would they update it similarly to the 12 and make it all around better compared to the Nano 11 Adventure? So three pros that I have with the 12 Adventure is number one, if you are somebody who has an outdoor focused bias with their weekly training, and you also want a shoe that you can wear on a daily wear basis, and then also to the gym, the Nano 12 Adventure does a pretty good job tackling all of those asks. It's gonna be a pretty good shoe for more recreational lifting, it works for outdoor workouts, and you could even use them for light hikes and trail runs. So if you are somebody in need of that training shoe that can do a little bit of everything that does have an outdoor bias, I think you'll enjoy this model. The second pro with this shoe is the nylon ripstop upper and that full rubber outsole. So in the context of outdoor workouts, those are two components that you pretty much need in order to have your training shoes last a longer duration of time. Some training shoes, for example, can get really beat up outdoors due to their outsoles not being made for that style of training and the stress that like concrete can put onto their shoes. And then also the upper constructions can break down too because they're not used to that stress or potential abrasion from whether it be like concrete, rocks if you're hiking, etc. So with the nylon ripstop upper and the synthetic overlays around the toe box, the shoe's durability seems pretty good across the board. And with that outsole, you get a full rubber outsole and we don't have any exposed foam midsole. So with the increased lug depth of this outsole and the full rubber traction, I think you're gonna like the overall durability of this shoe for outdoor focused workouts. The third thing to like about this model, and I alluded to this earlier in my first pro, is that I like that this shoe can also double as a casual hiking and trail running shoe. So this is not necessarily a trail focused model. So when it comes to the terrains that you're gonna to wanna to use it on, you're gonna be a little bit limited. But if you want a shoe for more light and moderate terrains, the shoe does a pretty good job. So I have worn this model for hikes up to six miles with the dogs and they've worked pretty well. And for trail runs, I've rocked these for like 5Ks and lower and they felt pretty comfortable. So I like the versatility that you get with that shoe with this because some days I do like going to the gym, keeping on the same shoes and then just grabbing the dogs and going out to a hike. So having that shoe that can kind of just do a little bit of everything without having to switch my shoes for my activities I'm a fan of plus this model does have some reflective properties to it so I think that is also a perk for evening wear in this shoe and it's a nice little touch to the upper of this model but now let's talk about a couple of cons I have with the Nano 12 Adventure so three cons that I have with the Nano 12 Adventure is number one the lacing system so this is something that I think could be very polarizing with this model, especially for folks and lifters who have certain types of foot anatomies. Now, with the lacing system, and I'm gonna to try to explain this in a very concise way, you have two eyelets here that are made of plastic TPU. In theory, I like this for durability and foot security. However, what ends up happening with this model is that when you're wearing this shoe and when you tie your laces up here, this ends up sliding down because of this like reflective piece up here on the tongue. And then these top intersection of laces ends up also sliding down. So now you have basically three intersections of laces crossing this one point on the midfoot. And so with this plastic, you get like literally no flex out of this midfoot. So what I found is that this felt super limiting when I was really tightening this shoe. And so if you have higher arches, for example, or thicker feet, I could see this being a problem. I actually have never had my feet cramp this bad in shoes, but when I tighten this model a lot, and when I was doing cleans in the shoe, I actually got a foot cramp because of this, because I think when I was like going from sharp dorsiflexion to plantar flexion, so essentially flexing my ankle up to down during cleans and having this so tight, I basically like couldn't let my foot move through its normal range of motion and it caused my foot to cramp a little bit. So I'm not sure if this is going to affect everybody the same. And so I tread lightly with this con, but it is something to keep in mind. And honestly, like I like the idea behind this rewrite lacing system, but I'm not sold that it's gonna be really good for everybody. The second con that I have with this shoe is the reworked boot. So again, like the lacing system, I like the boot idea because it does feel a little bit more comfortable. It has a nice level of structure, but what I was noticing, and this is a very specific context, so this likely won't be a con for everybody, but when I was doing some lighter trail runs in the shoe and some light hikes, and when I was going downhill basically having heel strike, when you hit the heel on this model, you essentially have the boot open up a little bit. 
this was also something that was happening in the Metcon 8, so I don't know if this is just the theme of this year, but with this boot opening up on some trails, I was having gravel get into this model, so it was kind of annoying because then I had to slip this model off, put them back on, and so the boot construction, I think, is good for most situations. However, if you are gonna be doing any downhill stuff, especially outdoors, if you're doing running or hiking or trail running, that could be problematic because debris can get into the shoe due to the lack of boot security that you get when you're doing any form of like heel strike or brake going down a hill. My third con with this model is that while this shoe is pretty good at tackling a little bit of everything, it's also gonna have limitations as you get more niche with your training. So for example, if you're looking for a training shoe for heavier barbell training or CrossFit, I think this model will fall short. It doesn't have the best stability. And with this reworked upper, I found it pretty tough to actually ground my toes in this model when I was doing like heavier deadlifts and squats. So something to keep in mind with this shoe if you're planning on investing in it to train heavy. And then with CrossFit, it has the same sole construction as the 11 and 12. So I'm not sold that the durability is gonna be super great with this model when it comes to rope climbs. So just keep in mind that this model will be a little bit limited as you get more niche with your training. But now let's talk about performance with this model. When it comes to the performance of the Reebok Nano 12 Adventure, I'm gonna break this section into a few different parts. I'm gonna talk about lifting, versatile training, outdoor workouts slash short runs, and then daily wear. In the context of lifting, this model does an okay job. It's not my favorite shoe for heavy training, but if you want a model for more recreational strength work, this model should be plenty fine. You get a decent level of stability with the Float Ride Energy Foam midsole, and with that full rubber outsole, you get a nice level of tread. Now, my issue with this model is that if you plan on going really heavy, for example, with your barbell lifts, I'm not the biggest fan of the toe spring in this model, and with the upper that's a little bit more rigid, I found it a little bit difficult to ground the toes in the shoe. And and that's especially for things like deadlifts or RDLs where you want to really ground the feet when you are doing those movements. So overall, the shoe should be fine for more recreational lifting, but when it comes to being more specific in nature or if you plan on going really heavy with your lifts, I would say the Nano 12 Adventure is probably not your best shoe. When it comes to versatile training, this model also did a pretty good job. So I like the heel clip on this model and similar to the Nano 12 when it comes to giving you a little bit more midfoot support from both a medial and lateral standpoint. Also, I do like the upper when it comes to locking down that foot. So with this reinforced lateral and medial synthetic layer here on the toe box, I like the level of security that you get with this model's upper. Now my issue when it comes to versatile training in this model is once again, the lacing system. So this is really interesting because with the lacing system and how I found it uncomfortable I couldn't get this model super tight. So then what ends up happening is I ended up sliding a little bit because the insole is a little bit slippery in this model. And it kind of limited my overall performance because for versatile training, I generally like having my shoes a little tighter, but because I couldn't get this model tight without a little bit of discomfort, it kind of limited me there. So it's tough because in theory, the components of the shoe feed really well into versatile training. So I think if you have the foot anatomy that aligns with this model and this lacing system doesn't bother you, it'll work in that context. But I did find them a little bit limiting for that reason. When it comes to outdoor workouts and short runs, this model did a pretty good job. So for example, taking this model out for hikes and light trail runs, I did enjoy this shoe. Now, obviously I did mention the con when it comes to like more downhill stuff, but if you're doing trails that are pretty flat in nature or just have like moderate descents, you should be okay in the shoe. And when it comes to terrain, I would say try to pick trails that are a bit more dirt based or like have bigger rocks or bigger obstacles that don't have a ton of loose debris that could get into the shoe. So for hiking and trail running, if you plan to go super casual with this model and you want a training shoe for that, it should suffice pretty well for you. When it comes to daily wear, I like this model for the most part. So I like the rubber outsole and upper for durability reasons and similar to the Reebok Nano 12, this is a model that I could see being good for longer walks or all day wear where you're gonna be on your feet a lot. And because you're likely not gonna be tightening this model a ton in that context, I could see this model being a good shoe for all day wear because a lacing issue that I have is probably gonna be a non-issue there for most folks. Also, the reflective properties are kind of nice with this shoe if you plan to wear them at night. So I've been wearing this model for walking the dogs in the evening and I've enjoyed them for that. But that wraps up my performance breakdown of this shoe. It's a pretty good shoe for a variety of things. However, it does have its limitations. So when chatting on the price of the Reebok Nano 12 Adventure, you can expect to pay $140 USD. Now for the Nano 11 Adventure, it initially MSRP'd at $130 and then was increased to $135, but now it is on sale. So this model did receive a slight price increase. Now, I'm hit or miss on that because once again, the performance of the shoe, but I think if you do like the tech and the look of the shoe, then it could be worth investing in, especially if you align with its overall intent. All right, so now let's answer the question, who should invest in the Reebok Nano 12 Adventure? So I think if you are somebody who likes having shoes that have a lot of tech in them, and if you do have an outdoor bias with your training and you also want a shoe that you can wear to the gym, this model could be worth it. However, 
I am actually not the biggest fan of the 12 Adventures performance. So with this model, I almost feel like it's over-engineered to the point where it almost was a little limiting in certain contexts where I would want the shoe the most. And it's funny because with the Nano 11 core training shoe and the 11 Adventure, it's almost flipped when it comes to the 12 and the 12 Adventure. I like the 12 more than 12 Adventure, whereas I like the 11 Adventure more than the 11. So it's interesting because I don't think this model is gonna be worth it for everybody, especially for folks with high arches or with thicker feet. I could see this lacing issue being a problem for you. So just food for thought there, I would say if you're on the fence between the 11 Adventure and 12 Adventure, go for the 11 Adventure. It's gonna be on sale too, so you'll save a little bit of money and this model's price point was increased. And so for its performance, I'm not super stoked on that price point. So I would say go for the 11 Adventure if you're on the fence between those models. So when chatting on the sizing and fit of the Reebok Nano 12 Adventure, I think most most lifters and athletes should be safe going true to size in this model. It's a little bit shorter than the Reebok Nano 12. And with this different upper, it actually hugs the foot a little bit more. So I think if you felt like you were swimming in the 12, you should be safe going true to size in this model because again, the length is a little bit shorter. And with that reworked upper, it hugs the foot a little bit more. So when discussing the weight heel toe drop and insole in the Nano 12 Adventure for my size 10 model here, we have a weight of 13.25 ounces. This is a weight increase compared to the Nano 11 Adventure. The heel to toe drop in this shoe is seven millimeters and this model has a thin foam removable insole. All right, so now let's go over the construction of the Nano 12 Adventure. Up here on the toe box, we have an extended outsole layer that wraps up. And then looking at the upper construction, we have a nylon ripstop upper throughout with a bunch of textured layers. Around the toe box, we have like this more gritty material here to help give you additional durability. We have some reflective properties here on the lateral and medial side of the shoe. And then back here in the boot, we do have a reworked boot construction. So this tab is a little bit more flexible and there's a good level of structure in this boot. Looking at the lacing system, we have one, two, three, four, five, six core eyelets that wrap up with a seventh back here for lace lock. Once again, we have these two TPU eyelets here. I'm not exactly sold on them being a good thing for the shoe for most lifters and athletes. However, I'm curious to see how others interpret this shoe's fit and feel when it comes to performance. With the tongue, we have a breathable mesh tongue. We have a loop here for security. We also have like a reflective Reebok badge up here at the top of the tongue. And this tongue is not gusseted. Looking at the midsole, we have a float ride energy foam throughout this shoe's midsole, similar to the Nano 11 and Nano 12. Looking at the outsole, we have a full rubber outsole. So this is one update from the Nano 11 Avenger 2 that I like, is that we don't have exposed foam layers here on the forefoot or heel anymore. This is full rubber. The lugs are designed to be a little bit beefier and give you more traction on outdoor surfaces. And then looking at the insole, once again, we do have a thin foam removable insole in this model. And then one more construction point to call out for the shoe is we do have the same TPU clips in the shoe on the lateral and medial side as we did with the Nano 12. Overall, I think that's like the brunt of the Nano 12 Adventures construction. If you have additional questions on this model's construction, drop a comment down below. All right guys, that wraps up my review of the Reebok Nano 12 Adventure. Overall, the shoe is okay. There's a lot of cool tech in this model, but I'm not sure that all the changes made to the shoe were necessarily a good thing. So that being said, if you have additional questions on this model, drop a comment down below or reach out to me personally, whichever you prefer. And as always, drop a like on the video, drop to the channel. I'll see you in the next one. Sick, sick.